Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about impact. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a software engineer, how do you strive to make an impact in your role? Well, that depends on if you ask me personally or if you talk, you speak about people in general. Um, if you're just in general speaking about software developers, there are a few ways that you can make an impact. The problem is that there are so many ways for you to do that, that it's difficult for me to to cover all of that in one video because it can be everything from that you, you, know, you, you do these fluffier things where you try to make an impact through social gatherings, education, workplace environment type of things and then you can have things like education and you can have things like uh, uh, you know people who are more inclined towards building tooling for other people like uh, helping out pro improve uh, uh, the quality of the software or the release velocity or development velocity release stability uh, you can also be the person who just, just kind of just engines the whole thing and churns out more code than anybody else, hopefully at a good quality level, etc. etc. There are so many ways that you can sort of get an impact. And that's why I usually tell people that once you get over the hump of learning how to do software development, a very good investment for you is to start thinking in terms of where your organic interests lie within whatever you're doing in software. Because when you start getting inclinations where you sort of go, well, I find that extra interesting or that extra interesting, it sort of starts to give you a picture of what I call your, like your, your um, identity, your corporate identity. It's not corporate identity, but like your identity as a software developer, because we have these archetypes of people who are very common within software development. We have evangelists, we have tool smiths, we have like... Uh, uh, and as I said, engines, etc. So there are all these types of people types within software who have, like, they're all software developers. It's just that they usually are, they behave and value different things, and they want to contribute and sort of express themselves, express themselves, and receive appreciation for different sorts of things, if that makes sense. And that is something that you should uh, have a little bit of a think about, like how can you contribute? And that's where I, in other videos I've also mentioned that business mindset really plays in here because some people who do this, they get very frustrated because they might work for a company where their personal way of being extra you know, showing that they care and like actually doing the extra, going the extra mile. Well, the way that they do that is, for example, by writing extra nice unit tests or being very good with quality. But they are working in a company that doesn't really care, care so much about quality. Or in another company, it might be that you know they're really into you know learning and creating a nice environment and supporting other developers. But they're in a company where everybody's sort of in boxes, like everybody's working on their own thing, and the management's really only wants everybody to just churn, 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 like this, uh, the, these sorts of things are not what they appreciate. And so that kills their motivation to do that sort of thing. And what I find sometimes a little bit sad is that you you get punished in one company and you sort of think that that is bad behavior. And that's where I think it's sort of like traveling in a sense. If you travel the world, it's less likely for you to get this like nationalistic or racist or sexist or like the, these sorts of narrow mindsets on something because it's very difficult to maintain your like your uh, like the, the uh, like uh, <laughs> it's very difficult for you to maintain these narrow mindsets when you have ex been exposed to different variations of the thing because that it opens your eyes usually and that's why professional traveling is a favorite term of mine where you should tr do a little bit of professional traveling i think i have you know when you feel stable enough to get a, another job like do the thing that you're doing until it feels a little bit boring and when you're not learning uh, and try to go somewhere else and see if you can learn a little bit more because a little bit of width in your experiences is very healthy for you which gives you an understanding of what type of person can you be where you can contribute and make impact but at the same time understand what type of things this specific company is looking for that they will really appreciate. Now I, if we talk about me pers personally, have an archetype of personality or something that I am extra fond of doing or the way that I like to contribute. 
So one of the things that I found that I very organically do, which I like and I'm fairly good at, is to identify the problems, like the, the real problems that hinder productivity, effectiveness, equality, and all these sorts of things, right? Process problems. Everything from how a manual process works to how digital product problems, so etc. Et I'm a problem solver, if that makes sense. Not in the sense where, like, I'm not talking about like algorithmic problems per se, that could be one of them, of course, but more about in, uh, if you think about a manufacturing process, an assembly line type of thing, where everything has to, you know, you on a, in a car, for example, for making cars, for example, you start with the frame, you add things on top, like um, the steering wheel and the, the tires, etc., etc., until you have the end product. And something that I found to always be very interesting is to understand that whole process. How do we get from, you know, raw materials all the way to the finished product? And fi analyzing that process and understanding where the bottlenecks are, where we need to make improvements, etc., etc. That's something that I find very interesting, and I'm decently good at. So that motivated me to be very broad in my understanding of different concepts because as you can imagine software is a big thing where we talk about the stack and some people are front-end developers some are back-end developers some are ops people uh, I have a personal ambition which I call being the universal programmer which is just a fictive person I'm never gonna be that person because programming is simply too large but I enjoy just failing at the thing uh, which is to learn all the things because as you can imagine if you're gonna do something like Ford uh, which is like to automate or like to create like the uh, the assembly line or not the assembly line but the the, the way we think about modern factory assembly lines uh, you have to sort of have this very wide perspective on all the components that make up that process and also if you want to make meaningful change happen because that is the thing that I really enjoy to get my hands dirty to actually go in and actually look at these things and figure out okay these are like this is the code this is the process or this is the team this is how they're working this is how they communicate and actually set up the structures that are necessary to improve that performance it's almost like tuning engines or tuning a process in some way that is my way of making an impact within a role which of course as you can imagine doesn't go over really very well if let's say i'm in a company where they just want me to sit in my chair and focus on the coding I can absolutely do that. It's just that it's not so fun for me, and usually it's uh, not. The, it's where I am right now in my role, or in my current place in my career. It's not something that I find all that interesting. So in my current role, I work as a tech lead and now they're moving me up to become an architect sort of thing due to the fact that I've been able to do this exact thing within one team. So. I could at the code level, which is sort of nice because about this is because it's very flexible. Because when I work at just uh, when I work as just a software developer, I can do it in the code. I can very quickly tell my co talk to my coworkers and say this is really nice, like we're producing and so forth. Maybe if we change this abstraction or we add this little uh, tweak here and there, we can actually get a l larger improve, like a, a better end result. And so they start to notice, uh, usually, that, or hopefully at the very least, that, yeah, actually we could do that. And then we get a few improvements. You should build up some credibility, and now they get you up to a team lead level, and then you do the same thing. And this is where, the, uh, usually, there's a bit of a difference between how I do things and how some other people do the same sort of thing, like the toolsmith type of people, where they try to solve everything with code. I try to figure out the root of the problem, where, in many cases, the real solution is to just write better documentation or create a process for the team that actually ends with a greater end result and sometimes they, it's the coding thing and then you sort of and then after that it's sort of like oh okay you actually made this entire team go from sort of like this situation where which was not exactly what we wanted but now the end result is much much better could you try to do that for the for like the entire department and it kind of grows from there, if that makes sense. That is the sort of person that I am. That's how I strive to make an impact. I'm, but at the same time, I'm not the sort of person who's really into, I don't know, office parties or setting up presentations just for the sake of presentations or things like that. I can do that on request, but it's not something that I organically go towards. And that's what I want you to really think about. What are you organically like? In, like what your personality? What is the thing that drives you to contribute in the work that you do? So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, there are many ways 
for you to make an impact in your role as a software developer and I urge you to try to think of it a little bit like being uh, like an artist or something like that. There are many styles of music, many format, mediums for art and so forth. Find the thing that makes you happy. How can you contribute and then learn the business part of like how IT companies work so that you can either align with how to make those efforts because it's really sad if someone who is really good at something goes and tries to do that in the wrong company because the company doesn't care or like they have like a misunderstanding or some misalignment there and it might be that you need to go to a different company or it might be that you have to rethink the way that you try you try to manifest the way that you're making that impact and when you find that thing that really sort of makes you engaged and enthusiastic you will start to get what I call your identity as a software developer it's hard to pay put a label on it sometimes because some people are very broad and like very diverse and do a lot of things it's so hard to put people in boxes if that makes sense but when you get there you will start to find that you actually enjoy certain types of activities within the company that you are working in some people just want to focus on the code and like be really masterful and know everything about everything some people want to help out with you know learning and so forth and so forth etc etc and they everything there in in between and it's really down to figuring out for yourself what do you sort of like what type of thing can you do what drives you to make that extra impact because as long as you can do the coding that's like the basics but if you want to make a real impact this is the thing that i've found to be the best way to figure out how to make that real impact have a great day